Not bad. Welcome. My name is John Gillingham, CPA. <laughs> CPA by day, app developer, and Indian development shop wrangler <laughs> at night. Thank you, everyone. Honestly, every single user matters. Sometimes I call them users because they download my app for free and give me one star. But we're not going to go there. <laughs> Just did. If you're not on the Wi-Fi, please check it out. Little demo right here. Flashcards, lessons, and more. Check out the push to flip. So this right here is the culmination of flashcards working with uh, my great illustrator friend, Courtney. Thanks for being here tonight. All the way from South Africa slash Canada. We also have audio recording within the app. We're trying to look at accounting differently, and we also have accounting video now. So if you don't have enough in my face <laughs> already, <laughs> you can get it there. So everything is available online. Again, thanks for everyone for taking the time <laughs> to get here. <laughs> from Boston, Dad, thanks for coming all the way from Harvard to see me, to 6th Street, San Francisco Tenderloin, it's greatly appreciated. Special thanks to my biggest fiscal sponsor, know it or not, Professor John Gillingham and my mom. <laughs> yeah. So I've been able to bootstrap accounting play the whole way through, but saying that you started a company or something by yourself without saying that you haven't been supported along the way is so stupid. Um, so whether it's capital or finance or a great place to surf over the weekend, um, we all help each other out. Thank you to my uh, favorite app tester um, and companion, Jenny Chung. Beautiful. Aww. But this is the story. I never got paid. <laughs> this is the story of accounting play. <laughs> the best way to learn accounting in the world. So accounting play, once also known as accounting flash, thank you to Alexandra Watkins for way with words, way with words, something like that. So branding specialist, this is sort of where it started. This is a strange app icon. I, I, I don't know if it's a gold tooth or the rainbow background, but it's strange. So it's been a long three year journey and we're going to go through it right now. So, over 20 people touched this project. And if my app developers are telling the truth, it's probably more like 100. Because they just, <laughs> yeah, they, it's, they tell me the developer quit and that I should understand that the project won't be finished. I said, I don't get that whatsoever. Over 20 people, three years, 3,000 hours of real human life, graphic designers, devs working in unknown conditions. <laughs> I mean, they actually launched an app and it, it failed App Store Review because the Wi-Fi signal wasn't strong enough. So you can imagine they're running this iMac 24 hours a day. I just really appreciate that help. So here we are with some of the informal team. We have Courtney with CourtneyIllustrates.com. We have Manpreet here with my super secret development team in a remote village. We have the legendary C. This is my graphic designer um, in deep Indo... <laughs> Excuse me. This is my graphic designer in deep Indonesia. How have I cobbled this uh, motley crew together? Very intimidating, extra intimidating. It's been a combination of Odesk, Fiverr, and friends. My favorite team, too. Six months they hatched, a beautiful app. Now, we all talk about Bay Area, <laughs> San Francisco diversity, and issues with not. <laughs> this is a true story. <laughs> I don't know. 
speak for itself. One more time. <laughs> Scary. Don't mess with Pukaraj. <laughs> and so Accounting Play was birthed partly out of my flat with roommates, and then I moved to my new office. This is some of the initial capital contributions. <laughs> um, <laughs> you honestly wonder why Macintosh makes so much money. <laughs> so of course you only need every single Mac device known to man, and then you get to sell your stuff where they take a 30% commission and they hold the money for 60 days, but I'm not bitter. <laughs> and so the idea started in outer space. <laughs> Post a very epic summer, I started working with Corny to try and make accounting more interesting. Present time, 2013, we have our banker Pig making a deal with that cat investor in space to try and uh, explain a derivative. Now, the MVP concept, if you don't know, is minimally viable product. You're supposed to be agile, develop something, and talk to the users, and develop around them. Clearly, I just didn't show this to anyone, because if I did, they'd be very, very confused. <laughs> and so it goes. The different symbols, the different signs to say, how should I develop this thing? I launched my app, and half my users were Chinese. And so I thought everyone in the world would want some Chinese app. <laughs> Terrible idea. <laughs> and so the early stages go and go. And one of the key themes is listening to the signs, listening to the people. Minimally viable product is about being agile and developing and listening to the truth. The truth is very small. <laughs> Five thousand app downloads makes you want to develop something. That's a lot. But then when they only open up for one session, approximately 4,477, it's a little disheartening as well as it is concerning that someone opened my app 945 times. So listen to the science people. Don't be like me. And so the concept started with Teddy Fab our protagonist in this crazy accounting world, <laughs> shielded in his corporate bubble. <laughs> if that's not abstract, <laughs> I don't know what is. And so it goes and goes. We start from the regular illustrations to the vector graphics done, <laughs> done in Texas. Cleaning things up, Teddy going to work after a long night. And so we start building out these characters. And after all, $10,000 later, my creation, <laughs> before the apps, we have accountingflash.com, a site that no one ever visited. <laughs> ever. <laughs> Some of the people not featured, this one lady from Craigslist, <laughs> on the east coast of somewhere, who was in school, who was going to help me with the development project. But her job at Kentucky Fried Chicken <laughs> got in the way. These are all true stories. <laughs> it's really true. So I was in Turkey working on this, uh, on this, oh wait, actually, you know what? Maybe we should just pause, because, you know, $10,000, we might as well see some features. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. <laughs> and so it was a year later, I pretty much abandoned this whole thing. And then a very special person asked me, hey, how are those apps doing? <laughs> and I was like, you haven't been to the website? <laughs> Accounting Flash? And so I took on the project to actually put this thing in an app. So this is how it works. All we need to do is communicate across the sea as to how an app is laid out. And so I started trying. Maybe it won't be so expensive. So getting a little bit more seriously into the initial uh, $10,000 fail, or <laughs> investment, as we like to call it, 
Um, it required capital to do this. I thought a $1,000 website would be a great uh, minimal place to start, but the big problem with that initial website was domestic development, high expectations for something, and people who want to make money on an hourly basis. You're going to set yourself up for some major, uh, major heartache, because at even $50 an hour, all right, maybe that was in my budget hourly, $50 an hour, you're going to get some of the worst developers and they're not gonna be able to produce anything in 20 hours. And so I started bidding out uh, these wireframes, which I kind of learned from my roommate. He was talking to India, doing some stuff at the time. And I was like, maybe I can do this too. And so this is this uh, initial schematic of making an uh, easy and basic flashcard app. And so then the app was born into existence. For those who are interested, I get a few different questions uh, most commonly, how many people are going to come tonight? I mean, very, very common questions. Who is your target user? The third question is, how do I get this stuff done? And so the quick answer is outsource teams with fixed costs milestones. So here we have a $1,600 project. And for Bay Area development, it's super easy. Add a zero and carry the one <laughs> and multiply it by three. And maybe, maybe they'll do it if your genes look cool. Honestly, working, unfortunately, a hard lesson was working with domestic development is just too expensive. And so I sought out some hungry teams. I got about 20 different bids. You look for who responds, who's interested, who's engaged, who can communicate. And every, there are some sort of stereotypes region to region, which I won't go into, but it's important to understand how different uh, countries do business rather than uh, get mad at things. So at a $1,600 price point to do an app, or at least a preliminary one, it's a really good deal. And so we started out with a $300 start, finalization of app upgrades, functionality of subscriber emails. These are actually a little bit jumbled up, but the milestone setup gives you a chance to bail if your team is not performing. And so the first app was launched. A lot of hard lessons here with Teddy and his gold tooth. <laughs> and the giant free sign above it. But I started to get downloads and it was really exciting from all over the world. And so I still don't know if I can make it. So get your gloves on. It's going to be a long ride. And for those taking the ride tonight, it's going to be a really long night. So I hope everyone joins us at Champagne and Bubbly, <laughs> or excuse me, Bites and Bubbles, um, after this event. Now, we're doing these vector graphics. Some graphics utilize, others not. So get your gloves on. It's going to be a long fight. Now. Going a little bit more into the, <laughs> the, uh, the video aspect. Now, should I press play? Yeah. I said, should I press play? Yeah. You're going to want to keep playing right now, Gabe, please? I mean, if that's not engaging, I don't know. It's... Perfect. Yeah, let's watch this. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. That was beautiful. So I hacked these three apps together, iteration after iteration, long night after long night. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Over 100 flashcards, crazy uh, illustrations. I love it. Lessons to coordinate with it. And now two games, debits and credit. Who has debits and credits on their phone? OK. Let's see, it's a hit. Thanks, everyone. And thanks for those five-star reviews as well. And also the quiz game. So now I'm in the process of trying to have a nice, cohesive branding. Uh, the flashcards and illustrations are still a big uh, part of the brand and why people like it and are engaged, but we've certainly branched out. And so for some of those visiting outside the area, they, in a way, it's a pivot. You're, you're moving from your original idea and developing around what is working and what people are interested. 
in. So I'd say over, you know, certainly north of a thousand people a week find the brand, get the app, but you got to look at those other more brutal statistics, which is your, your bounce rate. So now, in the process of rebranding and creating the marketing within the app, so that involves like viral sharing as well as making it easy, prompting friends to download and, and good stuff like that. And so this event partly is uh, about my self-proclaimed success, <laughs> and I appreciate everyone for humoring me on that. If we look up accounting on iOS, we see none other than number one and two spots Accounting play. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, seriously, you guys are too kind. <laughs> That's my life savings. Just joking, Dad. <laughs> the Roth IRA is still good. <laughs> so it takes a lot to get here. And I think people recognize the quality and they recognize the moat uh, consciously or subconsciously around the brand, in which case you'd have to be a little crazy to take this accounting education this far. So in almost no marketing at all, right? No. This is, a, it, thank you. <laughs> you guys got it. Um, almost no marketing, just one by one, user by user, grabbing phones when people are blacked out at bars and trying to find the house. <laughs> These, <laughs> I, we call that a growth hack in San Francisco. <laughs> organic, organic. Yeah. One person was, was actually um, asleep, <laughs> and I took their thumb and made an app purchase for them. Oh, wait, that was my <laughs> <laughs> There's been others. So <laughs> review by review, download by download, we create traction, and we create a market that's way beyond. So there's actually hundreds of reviews. These are only for the, the different releases. We're seven releases into um, accounting flashcards, which is now cards, lessons, and audios. And the best part is the video that's coming. It's going to be really great. So I really think everyone here should get the new app that's coming. I will contact. I will call you. <laughs> we're we're going to get that. And so we also have a podcast, <laughs> we, my team, and I. <laughs> And so getting traction, whatever, you, you got to see through the numbers, though. And we're going to do some Q&A. We're going we're gonna to get into some brass tacks about what it takes to make an app. And yeah, it's fixed, on mile, fixed cost milestones, communicating your idea, having a vision, and having staying power. When I say 3,000 hours, I'm not joking. That's 2,000 or so of my time and about 1,000 of other people. And the more people I would bring into the project, the more interesting um, it gets and the more feedback I get. So maybe a podcast, four or 5,000 a month, but you have to see through these numbers. Just shave off a zero. It's super easy. So like maybe 34 people actually soak it up. But when I get an email from an accounting student, it's almost like every day, too. <laughs> no, seriously, like every day. And they ask me how to pass like this test or whatever, and I give them my free stuff. But it's very significant to see that the reach is so global, so broad. And when I wake up on a Saturday and I check my phone and, and see people, how people are reaching, it's, uh, it's really nice. So what does Accounting Play want for the holidays besides reviews? <laughs> um, solid branding. You know, branding is expensive and it's not so easy. I've spent a lot of time with different designers, different app icons for a return that's not that great. And sometimes people like an app icon that's ugly. And I don't necessarily know why, but they just might. So a lot of the iterative process has to involve tracking. And so it's very easy for me to say, I want people, I want to know how people engage in my app, where the drop off rate is. And I want like a little point system and stuff like that. But getting a, a local developer to do that properly is like 5,000 bucks, I'd say, you know, 510. And they may or may not actually deliver on it. So you're always up against a cost benefit, especially um, on this project, which is going to be, you know, cash flowing next year. I mean, it is now, but just got to chill out on the dev and do a little bit more organic marketing outside of just what people are uh, just coming across. More podcasts. Um, classic press and backlinks. One thing we haven't talked too much about, and I can go into depth when we do Q&A, is the difficulty 
is actually one of the most important points. The difficulty of people finding you online. Online is noisy, it's messy, um, and uh, to think that you're gonna rank anywhere in Google these days, it, it's, it's very difficult. It's almost like a junkyard. You search a big term, and now you have the, the paid ads and then a few legacy sites taking it up, and if you're not in the one, two, or three spot, you're not gonna get found. So getting other people to link to you, to backlink, starting early, getting um, traction and getting people to link to you. So given that the internet space as it is, even though you have the best accounting site in the world, <laughs> no, no, it really is. We're gonna do a, a, a quick tour real quick. Um, people aren't gonna necessarily find you. So you have to pick a channel and that channel started uh, with me in the app store and luckily I was there early so we have apps the other channel was a podcast so only so many accountants are doing podcasts out there and I think regardless of what it is if you love Twitter if you love Facebook if you love Amazon which is another channel that we're featured on that you need to get out there because people aren't just going to find you magically so spend a lot of time and effort um, and, and developing all this, and people are going to find things over time more and more. However, absent of that and in that early growth, you need to hack your marketing in different ways. And that starts with optimizing the current channels, which for me are uh, the apps. So online we have our glossary, shop, e-commerce, uh, but every different channel involves its own challenges, which we can go to in the Q&A session. And again, I can't thank you enough for coming through and uh, learning a thing or two uh, about my house. <laughs> Questions, please, please. Yes. Hey, Hi. this is uh, John's older sister speaking. Um, I was trying to download the app on the phone, and I just think it's really interesting to take an outsider's perspective and see like if I'm looking for something accounting in the app store where John surfaces and whether there's any sort of SEO type behavior that you can do within an app on a word like I, I just looked up accounting to, just to see if I could find your app hmm. and it's, it's very varied so I'm just wondering if there's a, just like a website if there's any SEO that you can do on a web platform great uh, question on the, on the Nicole. app platform so Nicole has um, an Android device, and so every, yeah. that's another channel. The, <laughs> the, the Android channel is very different from the uh, App Store iOS channel, and just, just as there is search engine optimization, SEO, there's what's referred to as ASO which is app store optimization, which is what Nicole's really talking about. So when you go to a really crowded uh, store, such as the Google store, for example, you will have two apps showing, and then you're gonna have books and movies and very complicated. So I'm about number five or six on Google. I actually released the other, um, another app, and I would search for this, my own app, on the uh, Google Play store, and it won't even show up because it's not optimized for that. So it's using its own search engine algorithm to query the description that's actually on the store. So it's aggregating that information and then using other engagement metrics to get there. So in the iOS store, you have 100 key terms that are buried. And those could be accounting. And if one key term is accounting, it might be redundant to use it as a key term if your app is called Accounting Flash. So there's an entire cottage industry dedicated to how to optimize your description and app store placing. For example, if you're doing a dating app, having a keyword as dating, you're, they're never gonna find you. So you need to utilize that channel a little bit differently. Uh, maybe dating for old dogs, dogs. yes. Dating for dogs, dating, and you know, actually, <laughs> we should start a business. <laughs> okay. I, I wanted to add a comment to that. So yesterday, actually, Google announced they're indexing all the content of every app in the Play Store. And so there's going to be, an, even apps that are not installed on your phone. So if you search for something, you can actually preview an app 
in the app store and actually run certain commands now. So you could execute like a buy or an install. I'm thinking of apps that are, you know, that have like specific executable functions like calling a cab or whatever. So you can, if you search for cab and Uber came up, you can call a cab even if you don't have Uber installed. So that's a new thing they just installed. They just announced it yesterday. Yeah, so changing landscape. Um, and what I struggle with as mostly solo entrepreneur with, with a, a nice big team and family around is not being able to do everything. So there's no way I could ever optimize for, say, that particular feature. So knowing that, I invested a lot in, in sort of the illustrations and what I like to call evergreen, timeless content. But if someone, for example, tried to be the next accounting app, now that I've been in the store for two years and dominating that partic dominating that that <laughs> that particular that particular keyword, um, beating other startups such as QuickBooks, um, <laughs> it's going to be difficult. Um, so that's the challenge. How do we get found? And now I think increasingly the internet is crowded and marketed too. And if Google is actually have a, speaking of Google in the App Store, you're going to be able to do paid ads. Um, to get your app ranked up effectively higher. So when you're doing these search uh, searches, whether it's the app store or whatever, the paid people are gonna come. And when you see those little Google ads, those aren't like a 10 cent click. When, when everyone clicks on those ads, um, you're talking from $1 to even $20 for one click. PLA. Exactly. PLA is? What you're describing. Okay, right. Um, yeah, we have all, all the, you know, the, the, the marketing terms, you know, click, cost per click, cost per acquisition, and everything. So if you want to pay for an app install, you're like a buck an install. And right now, that's, that's not um, economically feasible. So given that strategy and the changing landscape, I am investing in the flagship app and then optimizing the marketing from there. Yes? How did you decide to branch out from the flagship app to more than one. So knowing that that splits your resources, but maybe broadens your market, but also dilutes your future positioning, messaging, all this sort of thing. Great question. I was inspired from a show at the Bill Graham. It was quite an inspirational show. And I saw the numbers that they were playing on the, uh, the backdrop. And I had this vision of T accounts and, and how we could gamify it in a, in a different way. And it's just like when lightning strikes. <laughs> I mean, truly, I, I, it just came to me. Now, outside of that brilliant vision, I was also inspired, and I do mean that, and I was, I was also inspired uh, by uh, Lumosity. On, on its early onset, and I always thought, hey, cool, it'd be great to have a little game. You know, given the framework of T accounts, debit, credit, um, it gives you a very basic um, gamified landscape, which is ascertainable. So after I was in my sort of fifth release of my main uh, content platform app, I had the confidence in the team in order to actually have something with a little bit more animation um, and also a little bit uh, of adaptive learning feature so things get harder as they go along. Thanks for that. Are you um, trying to work with distribution partners, for example, like tutoring companies that could push your app to all of their students? Um, strategic partnerships type of thing. Excellent question. That is a big goal. I was, uh, someone actually reached out uh, recently a gentleman in India who wants to, you know, white label the app to, you know, various uh, curriculums. And so that is a huge goal uh, for next year. So in the marketing landscape, it's no longer about billboards. It's about building the marketing into the app. And it's also about other strategic channels. And so one of those could be teachers, right? But if there's not an incentive, it becomes difficult. I need to actively be seeking those partnerships and if anyone is aware of a potential one, I'm definitely interested. And that's yet another area where when you're stretched thin and your development hat is on, it's very difficult to start cold calling. But absolutely, that is gonna be a big thing for next year, um, uh, mass licensing. And something as simple as that will involve, I have uh, one release for debits and credits that isn't an in-app purchase model. We're gonna get a little into the gutter but it's something that you actually pay for. So pay for eight, eight bucks straight up 
So then you can do things like educational pricing and educational packaging. And I've been waiting until the branding has been a little bit more cohesive before pushing those other channels because I want to make sure my marketing dollars um, and hours pay off. But excellent point. That's a huge goal for next year. Maybe just a couple more, and I mean, we got, we got a good party. <laughs> All right, someone who knows absolutely nothing about tech and something about publishing, but not a whole lot. What I find out, <clears throat> what I discovered through my own experience is that Publishers are increasingly looking to, in some way, blend with all the functions that, that, that the internet can deal with and publishers can. And in accounting, and as in many other specialized fields, textbooks are incredibly expensive. And too expensive for students to afford. I mean, uh, when I was an undergraduate in Cal, I spent $20 a year on all my books. You know, now, uh, uh, an accounting textbook probably costs more, more like $150, which is equivalent. So that I, I know from this that, that, that eventually the uh, education of accounts is going to go online because otherwise the students couldn't afford it. So my guess is that uh, publishers are looking for someone with an online experience, not only to tack on to, to a written publication, but maybe to guide in the future. So I just want to ask if you have thought about that, just something to normally discuss it with you, and if anybody else is doing it. Yeah, great question. Mostly, hey, versus a $150 textbook, 25 bucks of apps is, is a fabulous deal. And I think that's something that needs to be further pursued. The main issue is teachers are in a very comfortable environment and they don't have much incentive to change. So with that $150, $200 package also comes uh, ways to test the students. And it's sort of like a reversion of group thinking in which it's like, why should they bother to take any risk to take something on? But it's another channel ultimately, ultimately would be some sort of accre accreditation um, of accounting play so that they can use for an intro to accounting course as a standalone resource or in conjunction with other free textbooks. I never wanted to make a textbook, but there's a great free accounting textbook online open source to everyone. So we don't need that. And I have been working with um, a couple of different teachers on uh, incorporating things into the curriculum. Pretty much a marketing job at that point. So thanks so much. I think, I think we've touched on a lot of points. I, I didn't really get to sing a song. I'm sorry, we're no time for questions. OK, no. Yeah. <laughs> One more question. Yeah. So aside of growing, uh, increasing in assets, I was just wondering, how does your product capture an audience, particularly students and professors? Like, what is your what what is it about your product that makes it different from so many other accounting flashcards or apps? What makes it very unique? It's number why, one. And why should no? It's not number one. Why should we, for accounting students, why should we download your app? Absolutely. I think mostly we're just talking about the value proposition. And the proposition of accounting play is learning accounting different in an engaging way where you have micro lessons designed around the ADD person. We're traveling in the car, you can use audio. We are having the video feature rollout. So you can learn concept by concept in a more diffused search term type of way. Now we also have a gamified debits and credits, which makes the repetition and animation much more interesting and teaches much faster. Right now, I see accounting play as a supplement to a regular accounting curriculum. However, we also have the accounting play syllabus, which is on this blog post. On another, we'll also post all the pictures for tonight, where in four to six weeks, Someone can go from zero accounting knowledge to almost passing the CPA. It's actually, John, final question. That's, that's, where, that's where I think Ambitious. That, yeah. no, I think that you have to use the apps 12 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> and you won't really have the credits. I, I'm sorry, we're going to have to wrap this one up. I would like to end on that, actually. We'll take the other, we'll, we'll take the other questions we'll offline. offline. We'll take it offline. But Thanks, I'm everyone. It's starting to get personal. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Let, let's, uh, Gabe, take it away.
Daddy cash up, cut it down, not the side now. Flip it round like expenses and debits, revenue credit. Woo, doggy! Dance, 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 dance. Okay, everyone go make merry as the does over. <laughs>